your first exercise in module one. In this exercise, you're going to be working a little bit with uh, one of the major areas of geographic tools, and that is geographic information systems and remote sensing. What you're looking at right now is, in fact, a geographic information system that is online. And again, what a geographic information system is, is an analysis system, a set of suite of tools and applications that allow us to examine spatial data. Remote sensing, as discussed in, in the video, the previous lecture video, is a, a way of sensing our environment remotely, that is, without physically interacting with it. And so that's what we're going to be doing uh, in these exercises. Now, the first part of the exercise, and again, please make sure that you watch the entirety of this before you do the exercises. You're going to be working with three data sets. The first is what we call Landsat Explorer, and this is a way of looking at Landsat satellite imagery um, and remotely sensed data. You will then be working with LIDAR, uh, light detection and ranging data. And then lastly, you'll be working with historical aerial photography for Pennsylvania. So let's get started with this. First of all, in the Landsat Explorer, you're going to be working through uh, examining how uh, remotely sensed data for a given location tells us different things. And so the first thing I'm going to want you to do in this is to select a location. And what I'm going to do right now is I'm going to select Fresno, California. And again, you can select anywhere you'd like and your data set will come up here. Within the Landsat Explorer, you'll notice there are several tools along this side. And what I'm asking you to do first is once you've selected your location, you're going to use what is called the renderer to examine different types of remotely sensed information. And again, satellite information, remotely sensed data, comes essentially in different wavelengths or bands are, are the way we think of it. And so when I click on this, what you're going to notice is that the renderer says, for example, right now, what is an agricultural? So if I click on the, plot, the question mark next to it, what you'll notice is that this tells us that it's using a band combination of 6, 5, and 2. And again, what these bands represent is certain wavelengths within the electromagnetic spectrum. And when we combine them, we get to tell certain information. And again, the questions are going to ask you to read these and begin to explore what they mean. So just as an example, you'll notice here that it says that vigorous vegetation appears bright green. Well, we see that here and here and here. And that suggests that this is probably agricultural areas. Darker green is coniferous forest. And you can see that, in fact, in the upper alpine regions here. So again, we can change these, and I'm going to change this. It, I will also ask you to look at natural color. And here's our natural color. You'll notice, by the way, that these are different satellite images. And so you're going to see in some images there's considerable cloud cover. In others, there isn't. So each one of these will tell you different things. And again, in, in this exercise, I will ask you to look at the agriculture, the natural color, the vegetation index, and then you're also going to be looking at some other things throughout this. Okay, so that's the renderer, and it allows you to look at these in different ways. What I ask you next to do is to create what we would call a time uh, series or time comparison. And the way this works in this environment, Landsat data has been collected for a very long time. And what we can do is by selecting the time selector, I'm going to do that right now, I'm going to click on that. And what I'm going to ask you to do is we're going to change the cloud cover. What I would recommend is you select 5% cloud cover. And we're going to select summer. Next, I'm going to ask you to click somewhere on the area near your area of study. So I'm going to click right over here because I'm interested in the mountains. And you'll notice that this says this may take a few minutes. And it will take a few minutes depending on your browser. OK, now it's done creating these. And you'll notice that there's a whole series of optimal images. And what you're seeing right here is the most recent one. I'm going to click one back. 
and you'll notice that I get most of my area here. And so that's my interesting one now. And then I'm going to go all the way back to here. That's 1989. And I'm going to click on it. And what that shows me is that I can, in fact, look at this area here. And I'm going to be able to do my comparison. And so what I'm going to do, first of all, is I'm going to set this one. And again, you may look at these to see if you can get a little bit better imagery. I'm going to jump up a little bit here. And again, you can just kind of click through them and see if you get one that is optimal for your area. But I think I'm going to go as far back as I can. I'll go back even one farther. That's 1977. That's way back. And you'll notice it's not very good data. So we're going to go up to this one. I like that one better. And I'm going to set that as my secondary data. I'm going to click here on this arrow here. Now once I've done that, now I'm going to go up to my current one. And what I'm going to do now is I'm going to close this. And I'm going to, now I can use what we call the swipe or the change detection. And I'm going to click on that. And you'll notice now that what I have is I can look at how things change between these two. And especially, I'm going to look right up here. And I'm kind of interested in what's going on. Here's a lake. And I want to see if there's any change in that lake. And what I certainly see is there's considerable change here. A lot of change going on here. Again, I can change what I'm seeing this in as well. I go back to this. And I can change that, for example, to natural color. You can also do this by, again, selecting the time selector. And you'll notice this option um, allows me to actually manually select dates. And so, for example, I might want to go all the way back here. And I can click on that. It'll take a minute. And this is the image from 2013. Or I can go back as far as the data shows. And here is an image from 2000. I can set that as my secondary. And again, I can move this forward in time. And now I can do the same thing. Again, we're in a very detailed area here. And I'm going to apply this time slider to it. And if we look right here, what you'll notice is that I can look at considerable change in terms of, for example, how the city has expanded. And again, I'm going to point out right here, this is an urban area. You know, we can see in here some development. And as I move this, you'll notice that there's a change in our agriculture here. And so our Landsat data can allow us to visualize change detection, or visualize change, rather. Now I'm going to turn off the time slider and I'm going to turn off the time and now what I'm going to do is go back to my visualization and what I'd like to do now is I'm going to go back to my vegetation index and what I'm interested in now is looking at in fact what this area looks like and so one of the things that I can do is we can also use information that's called the Identify tool. And what the Identify tool allows me to do is to click on a point, and it will classify that area in terms of its curve in relation to different wavelengths or spectral bands. And so what you'll notice is that in this case, I clicked on an area that I knew was road, and what it did is it said, well, this is the selected points reflectance in all of these wavelengths. And it matches pretty closely to concrete. Now, that's very different, for example, than lush grass. You'll notice that lush grass would have much lower in these bands and significantly higher here. Now, what I would encourage you to do when doing this, and again, I can see it here what's going on. I would encourage you to change your renderer to natural color. 
That will allow you to see kind of what is in the area, and that'll allow you to answer the questions that I've had, uh, I have in part one. In part two of the exercise, you're going to be using the LiDAR viewer, and it looks like this. And again, LiDAR is an active type of remote sensing in which a laser beam is pulsed from typically an aircraft, or in some cases a drone, and it collects information about the height and the reflectance of surfaces. Now, in this, what we're going to be doing, the first thing you're going to have to do is you'll notice along the bottom, there is a legend and then there's a layer list. And so what I'd like you to do is we're gonna click on the layer list. And what I want you to do is we're gonna move some things around. The first thing I want you to note is right now we have what is called a, a terrain model. And what a terrain model is, is in a sense the bare ground. In other words, all the trees, all the buildings, all the bridges have been removed and all we have is the topography or terrain of the area. That's different from what we call a digital surface model. And a digital surface model, in fact, if I zoom in on this, you can actually see all of the buildings and all of the trees and just about anything else. In fact, in some cases, you can even see cars on the roadways. Now, what I'd like you to do, we're going to kind of order these that makes life a little bit easier for you. So if you click on the three buttons here, what you can do is we're going to, first of all, we're going to enable the pop-up. And then what we're going to do is we're going to move this one up. So what I'd like you to have in order is the digital surface model, then the digital terrain model for 2018, so that you can toggle these on and off. And you can, in fact, see the buildings come on or off an area. Then what I'd like you to do is move down here the same thing to get these in the right order. I'm going to again go to the digital surface model, click on it, enable its pop-ups, and I am going to move it up one. So now we in fact have these in the right order and I can now look at in 2012 what this landscape looked like in terms of its, you know, in, in a sense the actual surface and also the terrain. So again, once you get these ordered, the next thing that I'm going to have you begin to do is navigate to certain locations. And on the exercise, you will notice that it's going to ask you to type in a parcel, and I'm going to do that up here, 1122, and then 01. And you'll notice that a bunch of parcels, a group of parcels come up, and the first one you're going to select is this one that says 0008B. I'm going to click on that, and it's going to move me to a location. And in fact, this location is near a quarry that I'm interested in you exploring. And so here's the quarry here. It'll take just a minute for this to load. And you can see the quarry here. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to now, I'm going to turn on my layer list. And what I'd like to look at, I'm going to turn on the surface model, the terrain model, the height above ground, for both 2018 and 2014, 2012, 2014. Now you'll notice that what I'm seeing then at the top is this one, and if I turn it off, you'll see the bare ground, and if I turn that one off, I'll see the elevation, height above ground, and if I turn that off, I'll see back in 2014. If I turn that off again, I'll you will see the bare ground then. What I'm going to ask you to do is look at these elevations. And the easiest way to see elevations, again, I have to turn all these back on. If I click on a location, what it's going to give me, you'll notice there are seven readouts here. It gives me the parcel ID. It gives me the height above ground in 2018. Okay, so again, here, there's an area that's 0.2 feet above the base, the bare ground. The bare earth elevation there is negative 107 feet. So that, in other words, they've dug down 107 feet. Well, if I compare that to the 2012-2014, it's negative 61 feet. So they've dug down quite a bit in this area. 
The other way that I can do this, of course, is I can turn everything off except the terrain model. And that way, if I turn everything else off, all that's going to show up when I click on this are these two pieces of information that you need. So that's the current depth, and that was the depth back in 2012-2014. And so that's how we navigate and examine this area. Now again, a quick uh, review. What we're seeing here is, in general, the overall view of the area in terms of its the actual surfaces of all features. The terrain is the bare ground. I've stripped away all of that. Okay. The last part of the exercise looks at historical aerial imagery. And what you're going to be doing here is you're going to be looking at Pennsylvania. And what I'd like you to do is select a location. So, for example, if I put in State College, it's going to zoom me to that location. And what you'll notice is that what I'm asking you to do is to look at the 1940s, 19. 50s, 1970s, each one of these little red numbers that you see here are locations that are at the center of a historical image. So, for example, I'm going to click on the 1940s one here, and you'll notice that this is an actual image from, and again, if I click on it, 1938. This is, in fact, the date that it was taken. And this is kind of a broad, uh, kind of a coarse image of the area. You'll notice that it's kind of hard to see everything that's on here. If, on the other hand, you click on one of the downloads, and what I'm asking you to do is either click on the, the uh, image 400 or the image TIFF. Now, this is the image 400, and you'll notice that, in fact, it's significantly uh, better in terms of its resolution. We can really zoom quite a bit in on it on your browser or on whatever you use on your computer for image looking at photographs or images but for each time period for each time period you're going to download again the pen pilot one image for your area of interest from the 1940s one from the 1960s and one from the 1970s now once you've done those three what you're also going to use is the base map for the same area, and I'm going to click here. This is the base map. And what I want you to use for the area is what's called a Firefly Hybrid. This is one of the better image resources that there is for an area. And what you'll notice is that we can then compare, and what you are going to be doing is comparing, and by the way, we can turn off all these numbers simply by turning them all off in our layers all of these off and you'll get a better sense of your area of interest and what I'm asking you to do in the last part of the exercise is simply to qualitatively examine how the landscape has changed and describe it so now you've looked at three different ways that geographic information systems and remote sensing can be used to evaluate our landscape once you've completed the exercise please turn it into Dropbox number one and I will get these graded within the next three days. Enjoy the exercise.